Now we've spent most of this course finding derivatives and using derivatives for different applications. But now it's time to go the other direction. And we want to see if we can actually find what's called an antiderivative. And so just think of antiderivative as the inverse of a derivative. So um, I'll talk about indefinite integrals as well, but let's start with the definition of an antiderivative. You actually don't really get the concept until you do some examples, but here's the definition. A function capital F is an antiderivative of a function small f if for every x in the domain of small f it follows that the derivative of capital F equals small f. So let's, let me start you out with some simple examples. Let's say you wanted to find some functions whose derivative was 2x. So let's say we want to find some capital F functions whose derivative is 2x. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult because we know the derivative of x squared is 2x. So capital F could be x squared. But here's something interesting. Um, if you take the derivative of x squared plus 5, its derivative is also 2x. So capital F of x would have to include x squared plus 5 as well, right? Or if you took the derivative of x squared minus 7, you would also get 2x. So we'd have to include x squared minus 7. Actually, capital F must be every function that has x squared plus some constant. Because when you take the derivative of capital F, the derivative of the constant disappears. So you're only going to get 2x. So therefore, the antiderivative for the function 2x is actually x squared plus a constant. Okay, let's do another one. So let's say that I want the antiderivative for x cubed. Okay, so I need functions whose derivative are going to equal x cubed. Well, if you find the derivative of x to the fourth over 4, uh, its derivative is x cubed. If you find the derivative of x to the fourth over 4 plus 100, its derivative will be x cubed because the derivative of 100 is 0. And even if you use some weird number like minus pi, well, the derivative of x to the fourth over 4 minus pi is going to be x cubed because the derivative of pi is going to be 0. So therefore, an antiderivative of the function x cubed is the function x to the fourth over 4 plus a constant. Okay, now this one's a little bit more complicated, but, but I think you can determine it if we think backwards. Okay, so let's say that I want antiderivatives of this function, 2x e to the x squared. Well, if you take the derivative of e to the x squared, remember the derivative of that would be e to the x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So in other words, e to the x squared times 2x is exactly what we have here. So we would have to say that e to the x squared is an antiderivative of 2x e to the x squared. But just like before, we would actually have to include all functions that have the term e to the x squared plus any constant. Here the constant is negative 3, but since the derivative of negative 3 is 0, the derivative of e to the x squared minus 3 is still going to be 2x e to the x squared. Or if you said uh, e to the x squared plus 5, well the derivative of 5 is 0, so the derivative of e to the x squared plus 5 is just going to be 2x e to the x squared. So the antiderivative for 2x e to the x squared must be e to the x squared plus any constant. So when you're, when you're finding an antiderivative or evaluating an indefinite integral, and that's just the act of finding an antiderivative, you actually always must add a constant. Now we don't know what the constant is, and we can't know what the constant is unless we had additional information. For now, the constant is just going to be the, the letter C. Okay. 
So if I wanted an antiderivative of x squared, I would, you might think, well, x cubed. But the problem with the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared. But if I do x cubed over 3, when I take the derivative of x cubed over 3, then the 3's would cancel. So the derivative of x cubed over 3 is x squared. So x cubed over 3 is an antiderivative of x squared. But I have to include all antiderivatives of x squared. So that would mean x cubed over 3 plus any constant. What about 5? Well, 5 is the derivative of 5x. But, I would, but in order to get all antiderivatives, I would have to use 5x plus a constant. What about 4x? Well, 4x is the derivative of 2x squared. But again, I've got to use all antiderivatives. So it, the antiderivative would actually be 2x squared plus any constant. And this one's a little more complicated to see, but I'm just kind of put two, two together that I had up here. Um, we knew before that an antiderivative of x cubed was x to the 4 over 4. And we saw that the derivative of, antiderivative of 2x is x squared. So x to the 4th over 4 plus x squared, um, its derivative is x cubed plus 2x. But in order to make sure we include all antiderivatives, we write x to the 4th over 4 plus x squared plus the constant. Now for this function, we know 1 over x is the derivative of natural log of x. So the antiderivative of, of um, 1 over x would involve natural log of x plus a constant. Now actually, let me just mention this. Notice I put absolute value. Uh, I'll explain that later, but actually the antiderivative of 1 over x is actually the natural log of the absolute value of x plus a constant. For now, I'll just say that absolute value is to avoid having a negative argument for the log. We also learned that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So e to the x would be an antiderivative of um, e to the x. But in order to include the entire family of antiderivatives of e to the x, we would use e to the x plus a constant. We're going to eventually uh, get rules that, that work for finding these antiderivatives, but for now, like I said, I'm just having you kind of think backwards as to think, you know, what's the function whose derivative is the given function? Okay, so now we need, a, we need an operator that can be used for the act of finding antiderivatives. And this operator actually gives us an operator for what's called indefinite integration. So this symbol is called the integral sign, and it's used to represent an antiderivative of some function. So another way to state the antiderivative of x squared, rather than saying um, find the antiderivative of x squared, I can use this integral operator, and that integral operator tells me that the result is going to be whatever the antiderivative of this function is. And we know the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3 plus a constant. Now, in the reason we have the dx, the dx represents the variable of integration. So um, in most cases, whatever, this, whatever variable this function uses, um, this variable here is going to match it. So if you're integrating a function with respect to x, you're going to have dx. If you're integrating with function with respect to t, you're going to have dt. If you're integrating a function with respect to z, you're going to have dz in the integral. So don't worry too much about that. Just know that that dx or, or dz or whatever has to be in there. Okay, now the function x squared is called the integrand, and dx is called the differential x. And c, of course, is the constant. So when we evaluate this indefinite integral, of say some function dx, what we get is the antiderivative plus a constant. So this antiderivative that we're going to use is going to be whatever the antiderivative of 2x is, and then we're going to add a constant in. So for here, if I want the, the uh, want to evaluate the integral 2x dx, 
I say, well, what's the antiderivative of 2x? Well, we know from earlier that's x squared, and then we throw in the constant. If I wanted to integrate, um, find the definite integral for the function e to the x dx, well, we know antiderivative e to the x is e to the x, and then we add the constant. And if I want the antiderivative for x cubed dx, well, I know that antiderivative is x to the fourth over 4, and then plus a constant. So this integral here, we call this an indefinite integral. And the result of indefinite integrals will be some function of x, or whatever the independent variable is. So each of these, the answer was some function of the independent variable, x squared plus c, e to the x plus c, x to the fourth over 4 plus c. The integral, this integral, where you have little numbers at the bottom and the top of the operator, is called a definite integral. And the definite integral, the result of that will be a number. And we'll talk about definite integrals later. So for now, let's just look at some indefinite integrals. So if you want to integrate negative 4 dx, well, you know negative 4 is the derivative of negative 4x. So the integral must be negative 4x plus c. And you can always check these because if you take the derivative of the result, it should give you the function that was inside, in this case, negative 4. Uh, I'm not going to check them, but you can. Okay, so if I want the integral of v squared dv, well, that's going to be the same as the integral of x squared dx, just using the variable v instead of x. So the integral of v squared dv is v cubed over 3, and then you got to add the constant. Always remember to add the constant on indefinite integrals. And then you can check that and see that the derivative, th this shouldn't say x, it actually should say v. So the derivative of this with respect to v would be uh, v squared. Now this one, um, ignore this one because this was actually for a trig course, so I, I meant to eliminate it, so you can ignore this one. Okay, now it gets a little more complicated here, but I'm only showing you this one to show you that we kind of need some rules. Okay, the square root of x dx, if you wanted to find the indefinite integral for that, you would actually... I have to rewrite it as x to the one-half dx and find a function whose derivative is x to the one-half. Now, just take it on faith that this is the answer. 2x to the three-halves over 3 plus a constant. And now, if I can show you that the derivative of this is x to the one-half, you'll believe me, right? Okay, well, let's see. How do we find the derivative of this? Well, we know the derivative of the constant is zero, so let's get that out of the way. But the derivative of x to the 3 halves is 3 halves x to the 1 half. And then I have this 2 thirds to multiply it by. Well, guess what happens when you multiply 2 thirds by 3 halves? You just get 1. So this term is just going to be x to the 1 half, and then you're going to add 0 to it. So you're going to get x to the 1 half, and that's a typo. That shouldn't be there. Okay, so x to the 1 half is actually... Um, what we had in the integral. So this antiderivative 2x to the 3 halves over 3 plus a constant is actually uh, the antiderivative of x to the 1 half dx. Now in order to, to solve this without just taking my word on it, you really need some anti-differentiation rules or rules for integration and that's what I'll do in the next video is I'll actually um, show you how to get these integrals with uh, rules for integration.